you can probably tell just by the thumbnail and the name of this game that this is me. I had to check this game out. And it just got an update. And uh, it's a Metroidvania about a lone fungus. Perfect. Just checking some stuff here. Um, so yeah, I've heard good things about this, and the dev sent me a key, and I had to check it out, because Green Mushroom Metroidvania. To bring us back, you must reach the top of the world. Little mushroom fella. I uh, hope everyone's doing well. I tried uh, recording this with OBS for like 10 seconds because I reinstalled it and tried a couple things. And uh, it's still as bad as it's been. So never mind that. And XSplit records like 25 gigs per hour and a half. And I don't know how to change that, so fun. Technology's fun. Sometimes I wish I was a lone fungus. Just chilling. But hey, nice visuals so far. Simple, effective. You finally awoken. It's been so long since I've seen a mushroom. Oh, I should lower the volume, I think. Yeah, this is maximum fungus. Let me get some of that. There we go. I had something important to tell you, however, my memory is damaged, but don't you worry about me as I'm not really alive in the first place. Statues like myself were all built to serve a purpose. I cannot recall what mine is. You should just explore around and be careful, though, as there are creatures and contraptions roaming these caverns. They're dangerous. They're... Some of the contraptions are dangerous. So there's relics, there's powers, there's abilities. Okay. So this game, I've heard mentioned in the same sentence as that Soldiers game. The one that definitely has nothing to do with Soldier Boy. Who, by the way, has been coming up a lot in conversation lately. Pine Sword is your primary weapon, has many uses outside of combat, can bounce on enemies' objects by slashing downwards. Try it on spikes. Okay. Oh yeah. So, yeah. Mind Shroom increases your max MP by one point permanently. So a little Shovel Knight. But yeah, the Soldiers game, I, I know a lot of people have checked it out and liked it, but also had some issues with the difficulty being so insane. Or just, not even insane, just unforgiving. Some people like the difficulty, some people don't. And I think the devs are going back and just double-checking and retooling. Welcome to the Color Caverns. I've not heard, had the pleasure of uh, saying that for a very long time. Entrance was blocked, but you slashed your way in here. Can't slash upwards because of your mushroom cap. It seems like you'll have to adapt. These caverns used to be a very peaceful place. There's critters and stuff. Oh. Huh. Well, at the moment, I can't get over there, so... Got a slightly more nuanced map than Super Metroid. What I mean by that is it's not like quadrants.
But yeah, I think this is also one of those um, games developed by one person. Um, well, some of you probably know this very well, but Metroidvania is probably my favorite genre. I mean, I'm not always in the mood for one, but it's the type of game I end up playing with... I mean, no complaints. I'll play Metroidvanias... whenever, as long as they're good. I mean, Symphony of the Night and Super Metroid are two of my favorite games. They're in my top ten. So, that is the Metroid and the Vania. Hmm. Still need more abilities. Bloodstained was good as a recent one. All the other Castlevania games are good. All the other Metroid games, obviously. Um, Shadow Complex is one I don't hear a whole lot about these days, but that was a cool 3D side-scrolling Metroidvania on the Xbox. And I had a number of friends that really liked that game, and they were not into the genre. Shield Cap. You can parry enemy attacks. You throw the projectiles back at the enemy. Oh. Oh, I see. Okay. You gotta press it quick. You can't hold the button when you do that. Ooh, interesting though. So this game is about a little mushroom, but there is also a game that I played, I've also referenced kind of recently, that I liked, which was called An Un Untitled Story, which was like a really early indie game before the indie game Steam explosion. So I guess it was probably, I played it in like 2008. So just around the time it started, um, maybe it was 2008, maybe a little later, I'm not sure, but it um, is a Metroidvania game where you play as an egg. And that's it. You play as an egg. It's very simple, but it was fun for the time too, especially considering um, these types of games, like, playing any indie game at the time was- you weren't guaranteed quality. Hmm. Little practice area for the mushroom. You have come here to fight me. First, you give us life, then you abandon us. And now you have come back here to take it all away. I am going to destroy you. I mean, I'm not the one that has a giant set of nipples on my face. Okay, never mind. That's kind of not true. Well, yeah, I mean... Yeah. A little bit of nipples. angry. Yo! Oh. 
Oh, there's a life system, too. Yep, let's just take four damage for no reason. That's fine, I wanted to see what would happen when you lost all your lives. It's, it's all good. Maybe it's just attempts at... Different games handle live systems a little differently. I swear, I was just trying to see what the life system was all about. Ah. Too bad. M mush mover infusion gives you the ability to use the mush movers all around the world for traversal. Oh, that's what those things are. Mush movers. There's going to be a lot of fungus puns on this game, aren't there? Pungus. The hell is this? Just to get an idea of what's ahead of you. But yeah, I was waiting to play this game um, until it got its most recent update, which I don't... I didn't play it before, obviously, so I couldn't tell you what was completely different. Allows you to attack while walking without any slowdown. That's nice. Uh, controls are good, by the way. It's, it's, again, simple, but effective controls. Like getting more mobility options. And slowly ramping up the complexity is one of my favorite parts of the Metroidvania genre in general. Oh. Mush movers. I get it. And I think I get the life system. Before you go back to a checkpoint, I think this is a good use of lives instead of like going back to the main menu. Continue! Like you hit a checkpoint, you get your lives back. And just so you don't have to always go back. I guess there's other difficulty modes. So I would assume them other difficulty modes would uh, probably change that if, if people aren't into it. That seems suspicious to me. What, what's going on over here? <sighs> I feel like there might be a secret up there. Aha! sucks. Mm. 
Oh, okay, this is tough. Sorry for the weird noises. This is just kind of how I operate. Ah, oh, man. Okay, so some of this stuff is, like, very precise. Astral fragments are collectibles found in the astral gates. It looks like they're part of a bigger structure. Okay. Looks like the developer has a good grasp of how to make a fun movement system and also how to build Metroidvania mystery. Counter heal. After getting hurt, you have 1 HP left. You will have a brief time to recover 1 HP by striking an enemy. The relic will go on a cooldown after it's been used. Obviously, Hollow Knight. For some reason, Hollow Knight did not come to mind before, but Hollow Knight is a very good Metroidvania. I feel like this actually borrows more from Hollow Knight than it does maybe some of the other games I, I mentioned. I mean, broadly, that's not necessarily the case, but I keep forgetting how big of a game Hollow Knight became. Where it's like, when Smash Brothers was getting new characters, and there was a Nintendo Direct or any kind of video game conference, people were immediately like, where's the Smash characters? And now, instead of where, the, where are the Smash characters, it's where's Silk Song? which we finally saw a little bit of footage. Healing Fungus. You can heal for 30% of your max MP. Press hold B to heal. Oh. Will I ever see my creator's beautiful mushroom cap ever again? It looks just like mine, but with full of color. But full of color. Ah. I mean, I can't talk about Hollow Knight without just saying I do think it has earned its reputation as being one of the best modern, like, FPS games. Uh, FPS, what the fuck? Um, one of the most popular modern Metroidvanias. It... I think it's beautiful. I think it's fun. I think it succeeds on, on almost every level, but for me, I just felt like some of it was too big, and I have heard that sentiment echoed to the point where I know people who have played it because they heard about how good it was, and then kind of quit not too long after because it's just... there's a lot of level. I've said it before, my sweet spot for a Metroidvania is like 8 to 15 hours maximum. Okay, map markers. I mean, that said, Hollow Knight ended up being... It delivered. And I know people don't like me talking about the... 
the negatives of Hollow Knight, in my opinion, because best game, cute bugs. I get it. It is a great game, and I can't wait for Silk Song. I can wait, actually, but when it comes out, I'll play it. And, uh... It did almost everything right from a gameplay standpoint. I liked the difficulty of the game. Not some of the more difficult stuff I didn't do, because that was just, like, insane on purpose. But... I actually really loved the way that game played. I loved the boss fights. I loved the environments, the music. The abilities were really cool. The weird bug train stuff for transportation. Hollow Knight is legit. Would recommend. But, when I recommend it to my friends, I usually say, hey, listen, you're, you're gonna probably be overwhelmed a little bit at first, but just keep going. Because that's how I felt. Given this face of a demon, and now you're going to treat me like I am a demon. I'm aware, I'm alive, I've lived here longer than you have. I will not let you destroy me. Why would one give life to something just to take it away? But, like, gameplay-wise, this feels most reminiscent of Hollow Knight. And that's, um, that's a good thing. I also know people who played Super Metroid and just did not like the way the game controlled. And it is a little... I feel like Super Metroid has a very peculiar... Um, control scheme and sometimes can feel a little stiff here and there, but I, I still think it's great. Ow. That's why Fusion and Zero Mission did a really good job at turning those games... at making the Metroid games feel more modern to play. Oh, God, look at that. Look at that fight. Anyway, that's my Metroidvania rant. And I do feel like Bloodstained got a, a lot right. Even if... You know, at first, it was like, is this game gonna be any good? I think it ended up pretty good. I, I'd say it's... It's close to being a classic Metroidvania, if it isn't. That's my opinion on it. It just... You know, some of the visuals aren't as nice and as charming as sprite work. I hope my death means that someday, you will also bring us back. Conjure a mush mover which you can bounce off. If it's charged, you can strike it six times to regain 20 MP. Huh. Interesting. But yeah, so far, I, I like this game. Oh. Oh, boy, you run out of oxygen fast. I like this game, Metroidvania good. So far, the only thing I'm not really into is the music, and I still think the music fits the vibe nicely. It's just not like... like, catchy tunes, which I tend to prefer catchy tunes, but I think this has got like a nice, um... 
got a, a nice feel for the environment kind of sound. I don't know how to explain it better than that, but I like it. It just isn't blowing me away. Maybe later there will be more good good musics. I don't know. Sorry, I mean I hate to be like that, but it is kind of like my job. Well, we won't go that way yet. Oh. That's fun. Ladybugs are collectibles found scattered around the world. There might be a place where they fit into. I don't know what that is yet. Cool game so far. Once again, just want to... I don't know, like, sometimes with, um, developers that make a game by themselves, you don't know if you're gonna get, like, um, certain areas of the game are gonna be polished and others aren't, especially, like, if you have a programmer trying to make art for a game, which I've played that, and sometimes, sometimes it works out, and sometimes you'll be playing it, and, like, they go too hard on the technicalities and it doesn't look great or if you have an artist who doesn't really program and doesn't have like a good game feel for their game sometimes that happens this feels like a, a good compromise between both so location explored 38 percent So it says teleport, but I think you need one of the large save points in order to teleport. That doesn't have teleportation. Go this way. What if I told you I'm just biased because it's a mushroom that I get to play as? A green mushroom, no less. It's like, I don't take sponsorships, but if you have a green mushroom as the star of your game, my opinion becomes compromised. <laughs> Sorry. No. 
probably not. Health? Heart pieces. Fucking knew it. Just, just, just kind of seemed like it was there. Spike bounce. It gives you the ability to bounce on spikes without slashing with your sword. Will not work on enemies. Hold down while jumping to use the spike bounce. What? What? Equipable at shrine. Oh, I haven't equipped those yet. Well, that's the relic shit, like Hollow Knight. I see. New music. That looks important. I guess also the fact that you are, you know, killing bugs. That may have something to do with the Hollow Knight field. Just a sneaking suspicion. is. Uh, what is that? I feel like I should know what that is by now, but I don't. Oh, that's, that's the MP increase, right? Maybe. I guess before I forget, I watched episode 4 of season 3 of The Orville, and I thought it was very good, actually. Like, it didn't really reinvent the wheel or anything, but it was just solid, fake Star Trek. I mean, they definitely go into the, the storyline of, like, you know, they, they kind of retread the Klingon stuff from DS9 and, and uh, TNG, but it works. I mean, they're doing something different. And the special effects in the show mostly look good. I wish the ships looked different when they had a ton of ships, but I couldn't believe it. I was like, why does this early season episode have a massive budget? But I'm enjoying the show. I gotta say, I'm not sure how I felt about the first couple episodes. They were fine. It's not funny anymore. Like, the show isn't a comedy. <laughs> Make no mistake. Oh, that's what that is. Those things are for... They are specifically for badges.
there's like little bits of humor, but it's not like it was the first couple seasons, and it definitely feels more like they're trying to go into the tone of TNG and Deep Space Nine, which I think is all the better. Like, I don't need Family Guy jokes. I can watch Family Guy for that. It's a good trick to sell the network on the show, but now that it's established, it has its own lore, you get some big actors making cameo appearances, they can just kind of do their own stories. And even if some of the star stories borrow from Trek we've already seen, the closest we have officially is Strange New Worlds, which still feels different enough. So if I want that like classic Star Trek feel, I'm glad that um, we're getting it with Orville because it's being done pretty well. And when it is funny, it's not Family Guy funny. It's just, it works because it doesn't try too hard, if that makes sense. Also, one last thing I wanted to mention about the episode was I was surprised at how good the acting was from Sepp McParplin. Wow. I didn't know he had it in him. And he delivered an actual performance. I feel like he's been actually getting better as a live-action actor per series or per season. Oh, that one's for the MP. Okay. But yeah, I was shocked. I was shocked at, at like, some of the performance um, he was delivering. I couldn't... Oh, you only get a, a couple bounces. Oops. Not that he's going to win any awards, but for what kind of stuff I know him for, I was just really surprised is all. I never really was convinced with him being the captain of the Enterprise, so to speak. You know what I mean? He was just like, alright, Seth MacFarlane. Maybe he could have cast someone with a little bit more gravitas, but I finally, this this season, I kind of buy it. The king lies beyond this barrier. Time has corrupted his mind. Before I give you guidance, you must prove yourself against such a foe. He holds a stone infused with magic. You will need this power to reach your goal. Screw King. Oh, I get it. False God, you have forsaken us, have no power here anymore. I'm going to prove this by crushing you to pieces. Screw King. Ooh. I know that half of you are waiting for me to say, I think this guy has a screw loose. Alright, I know that one of you, maybe, was thinking that I should say that. Much like Grey Leno being spelled G-R-E-Y, as opposed to G-R-A-Y, because it is too obvious. I've decided against... I've decided against saying that this king has a screw loose.
go. I guess you could say that king had a screw loose. Upwards dash gives you the ability to dash upwards, of course. It refreshes when you land on the ground or strike an enemy. Cool, double jump. With a with a satisfying noise. Glad to see you victorious. You should look for a sleeping statue close to a shrine. Near it lies another powerful stone. Return to me when you have acquired the other stone, and I shall give you further guidance. I like that boss fight, though. You can tell that there's... creativity. It's not hit enemy until it turns pink and dies. Which it's that too, but there's a little more going on than that, you know. Go some movement combos there. Well, I get to keep the double jump. double jumps here. I mean, it says it in the top left, I just didn't see that. Which I'm kind of grateful for, because that simplifies things a little bit. There we go. That one wasn't too bad. Should I? Should I? Okay, never mind, I give up. <laughs> Some light frustration, don't worry about it. Probably not even supposed to be there yet.
Got it. That was just pure combat. Cool. Forward dash. Press RT. So it's one or the other, essentially. Jumping, I'm double jumping too soon, hang on. What am I doing here? There we go. That, that, that was good. Alright, so let's see. Yeah, that's weird. It, you see how it like, kind of just stops me from moving when I hit it? It's kind of strange. Huh. I don't know. This feels like a sequence break, but I can't figure out how. Because I get stuck on the thing. Alright, never mind. I tried. Those just, I think, restore your dashes. But they... It's weird, because that one slowed me down. I don't know. New theme. I'm going to get rid of this ability, because I'm not using it. Counter heal seems better. Oscar the Grouch, is that you? Clock Tower, is that you? Oh, it's one of those things. Ah! I am jumping all over the place. I do like the music better. In that previous area, so I feel like music is fine. I don't know how long I'll be able to listen to that double jump noise and uh, or the dash noise without starting to say, "Boy, I could use a little less of that." Well, that was the counter. One thing I like about this more than soldiers is that I am not stuck in that cave for two hours. Because in soldiers, while I was enjoying the game, there was like, and if you didn't watch it, the intro area is just kind of a boring cave. And it kept going. It just kept going, it kept going. There was like no variety. I've, already, I've been playing this for 50 minutes. We've already seen three major areas. So that's something I can appreciate even more. I, I mean, soldiers did look better visually. But also, you know, team of developers versus one 
guy. One guy, the fun guy. Like the game's difficulty is pretty good for like an hour in I'm into the like kind of the pacing of the game whereas soldiers is pretty tough right off the bat just to compare the two because they're recent releases basically that's that's the only that and their metroidvanias you know Is my button starting to stick again on the 8 bit though controller? It's a new one. Well, not that new. But that was why I ended up getting a new one. This is like maybe I got this a year and a half ago, I would say. The reason I, I got a new one is because the fucking B button, the bottom button, was starting to stick. And I had to open it up and clean it, and that really wasn't even enough. And it looks like it happened again, just now. It only happened the one time, but boy, am I having a hard time with technology. And another cool thing, if I can complain about technology a little bit more, I have a, uh, an S22 phone. Which I really like. It's, you know, I got a new phone because my old one was starting to crust out a little bit. And the trade-in value was very good. So I got the S22 fucking camera. I've had this thing for like a month and a half, and the camera is stuttering. I do 60 FPS, I don't even do like Ultra HD, I just do regular HD and 60. And it was fine for a while, but the beginning of the recording, and sometimes even midway through the recording, there's like stuttering. So I looked it up online, and there were some solutions that people were recommending, none of which really worked. And, uh, yeah, it turns out that this is an issue that people have had. And I am stuck with crust 60 FPS, even 30 FPS, when I start recording, like when I load into the camera. It stutters really badly for, like three or four seconds, like, so the beginning of the video is always crusted. Maybe even more than three or four seconds. Not a huge deal, but still something that, when you get a brand new piece of 2022 technology, you don't expect, like, lame shit like that to, to be, like, happening across the board to people. Uh, so I guess I'll ask here in the comments of the Lone Fungus video if anyone has any idea how to fix that without turning off auto FPS or whatever it is, because I already turned that off. If any other solutions, let me know. Probably gonna need an ability to shrink my shroom in order to get through there. Where'd that door lock?
Fast recovery. Decreases the time spent in a hurt animation after getting hit, allowing you to recover faster. here. I need to go back up here. I mean, that's where I died before, so now I know where that was and where that goes. Oh, there's a save point. Teleport. Are those books? What the fuck is a book? Whoa, Grand Librarian. Welcome, Green Cap. I am the Grand Librarian. I am one of the oldest statues in this part of the world. I used to have knowledge of all kinds of things. Much of that knowledge now lies dormant in me until better times arrive. The only thing I know of now is you. You are the lone fungus. There are no more other than yourself. I do not know what happened to your kind, but this world is dead. But preserved. Your purpose is to somehow bring this world back and how to how it was, or at least into something new and alive. You will need to travel to all the different regions and gather what's left of the magic that was once here. And then you must reach the top of this world. Talk to the other statues. Many efforts were made in hope that you would succeed. The world is, however, disrupted and old. Not every statue will recognize you. Good luck. Big germ. Huh. What was the Symphony of the Night boss? Grand Faloon? Legion. Well, both, actually. with the laser, the counterattack.
Yeah. Bouncy Spore. Cast out a spore that will explode after a short amount of time. Strike it with your sword and it will explode bigger. You can also bounce upward by striking it downward. Press Y to cast. Press L to... Oh, okay, so I can swap between spells now. Some monsters would rather eat the Bouncy Spore than you. It says, press, um... LB to switch spells. So we need to swap between spells. It can be equipped outside of a shrine. But... If I want to, like... Hmm. Oh, I guess that just launches you. Okay, I guess that's fine. Just another big jump. Power Extractor. Enemies on death will now have a chance of dropping power-ups you can pick up to make you stronger temporarily. Deep Grotto. connects back here. Hmm. Whoa. A voice crack during a hmm. Amazing. Ah! sooner. Even in these rooms you don't get your um, fancy powers. This is all just like movement and basic movement at that. Fuck. I say basic, but like fast basic. There it is, and I got a ladybug. Okay. Where to? This will just go back to the grotto and see if it's over there, wherever it connects.
on a side note, Corsair finally got back in touch, for those who have been following that saga of fun technology stories. And the, the mouse that they are made and gave me the same model of that also had the same issue because this the mouse is a bad mouse. It's just very poorly made. Um, they finally got in touch and they said that I can send it in. They'll send me a different mouse. At this point, I already have a Logitech. So I'm... Like, a little upset they didn't get back to me sooner. You know, it's like, oh, you want me to go two weeks without a functioning mouse? Wait, you want me to go two weeks with a mouse that that left clicks 50% of the time accurately? Reduces the cost of healing by 5% of max MP, requiring bringing the required cost to 25%. Is that a relic? It is a relic, yeah. It would be nice to have a little mini-map in the corner, like the Metroids of the world, but maybe it's intentional. Invincibility Stone increases the amount of time you spend in invincibility frames after getting hurt. Okay. Oh, those stop you so that you're not going too fast. Ooh, not bad. Ah. Oh. Little mushroom houses. Through me, you can see the magic you possess reflected. It is of the utmost importance that you gather what is left of the previous world, and then you need to return here. You have seven spells left to collect. Plus DLC spells. Or when the game is finished, I guess. Where is here, exactly? How do you even get more of the map? You just have to complete... Uh, maybe you have to bring it here? Yeah, you just, you scribble. You draw the map. I need to take a minute, actually. So I'm gonna pause, I'll be right back. Actually, to be continued tomorrow. I wanna do a full two hours on this and see how well it holds up over that amount of time. So, uh, yeah, tomorrow there will be another part. You'll just see it in a second. Alright. Well, this is still part of the same video, but, uh, welcome back. I mean, me. I'm back. So, it's been, uh, actually two days. Because yesterday got completely, completely away from me. Now the question is... Where the fuck am I going? I guess there are some teleport locations. Um, maybe here? Kinda hard to say at the moment. Oh, right. Oh, jeez. Let's see. Even though there aren't a ton of mechanics, I'm gonna see if I remember... ...any of them. Okay, so those always go diagonal. Hmm. Something strange in the neighborhood. Oh, there we go. 
Master Block Monster. I guess the only thing I would complain about so far is just that some of the monsters are a little static, but it saves on um, development time and art and asset time, rather. Which makes a lot of sense, considering it is a, like a, a lone developer. The lone fungus is the lone developer. That's, that's the uh, metaphor. Oh, that is not good. We don't want to do that attack. We don't want to be anywhere near that attack. But yeah, even the healing is very Hollow Knight. Oh, look at that! Well, that makes a lot more sense. You can actually hit the monster with these, uh, these cool things. Which is a mechanic that you are taught literally walking into the room. And somehow I still missed it. Yeah, double the damage. Twice the pride, double the fall. Shit, all I need to do is hit that. Yeah, I've been yeeted out. I kind of like the non-linear nature of the game. And that seems like, well, it's a Metroidvania. Why wouldn't it be non-linear? And... I guess you get used to having some guide rails for a game like this. It's not always the case, but in it feels non-linear. Like it feels like I have a lot more agency over where I go and when. Maybe it's just good game design. I also uh, finished The Stranger Things. Season 4. I'll tell you about the Stranger Things in a minute for those that, that care about my uh, movie and TV thoughts, which I know, you know. Again, not a professional. <laughs> Just know what I like. Have edited a little bit. That's about it. Have directed Grey Leno shows. So, you know, I'm, I'm some something of an expert. Oh, I hit the thing. It wasn't enough. All right. Now, I'm sure people will have heard more about me talking about the Stranger Things and other shows. I, I repeat a little bit. I tend to talk about things as soon as I've seen them, and then the first time I go live after having seen them, I am very impressed with Stranger Things Season 4. It's not the best season of television, but I gotta be honest, after Season 2 and 3, which were, in some ways, I enjoyed a little bit, hard to get that magic of the first season that everyone lost their shit over, but it didn't stop the show from being tremendously popular, in any, you know, regardless. Ah, oh, shit. But I think Season 4 was a huge improvement over 2 and 3, and... I guess I liked the ending. I liked that they weren't afraid to get their hands dirty a little bit. I don't know, like, which characters are gonna come back, but I will say it got kind of dark at times. Real cheese. They just slathered that cheese on there, but in a fun way. I'm um, talking about you, Metallica, Master of Puppets scene. 
but it like worked. That and all the characters got some time, even though there's so many characters and, and there was a lot of exposition at times, it still was an enjoyable show to watch. I thought the villain was, was pretty damn good. Not amazing, but also I like the personal stakes aspect of it. Uh, obviously the visuals are good because, you know, Netflix is going to put a, a million dollars because they know everyone's canceling the subs. So that's how you get people to stay is just do a new season of Stranger Things, I guess. But, um, soundtrack was good. The, uh, even if I've heard Kate Bush song a thousand times. And again, like, I'm not like Stranger Things hype magnet type person. I just enjoyed it. That sucks right there. That happens every time. I enjoyed it for what it was, and I thought it was just a fun show with a good amount of 80s nostalgia. And I'm gonna say I think this was almost as good as season one. I thought they, they really took their time with it, addressed a lot of the weak points. Isn't it nice when showrunners actually figure out how to, like, come back from some mediocre seasons and they maybe listen to complaints that people have had and, and address them without, like, just getting angry at their audience. That's the new meta, is get angry at- it sh Listen, they're stealing that from me. Full contempt for your audience. Which has only ever really been a meme for me. Sure, there's always gonna be a couple people, but... I think most people just want to watch something... entertaining, you know, to escape their fucking... miserable lives. And I don't mean that uh, dismissively, I mean that as like an empathetic thing, like fucking life sucks sometimes, and that's why I watch these shows, is to, you know, feel something, and feel maybe a little bit better. It's one of the reasons I think audiences liked that Top Gun movie was, you watch it, you walk out of the theater feeling like you were a part of something, and it's like a, I hate to say, feel-good movie, cock-sucking, feel-good movie of the year. But it really felt cool. Like you, after the end of that movie, you felt like... pretty good. Same for the show, even if it ends on kind of a dark note, which I liked, by the way. I like that there's some progression and the reset button isn't hit. And, uh, I think... They did a very good job with the season at getting things back on track and splitting the characters up into several groups was good. Not every character got the most amazing material. Sorry, Mike Wheeler. But a lot of other people, I feel, did. And Lucas finally got some nice development too, which was good. Bouncy ball. You can strike with your sword, it'll do more damage based on how fast the ball is going. Costs 15 MP to cast. Spells can be equipped outside of a shrine. Oh, you have to unequip one first. Huh. That's fun. Oh, and useful. Why is this Lone Fungus game so good? I don't- I don't get it. So yeah, uh, uh, just... Like I said, a lot of good seasons of TV. Barry was amazing, Saul is coming back soon, as of the time of this recording, like in a couple days. Um, Saul is obviously... Best show. Best show. But... Barry was amazing. Stranger Things was a lot of fun. Dare I say, well written, I think. I mean, I don't, I'm not a writer, but I just feel, I feel a disconnect from a show when dumb thing, ha thing happens all the time and characters are like overly, overly dumb. I'm looking at you, Obi-Wan. Let's leave every character alive. Oh, they're burning, they're stabbed, they're just on the floor writhing. Uh-oh. Leave them, they're probably going to die. 
let's hide in a trench coat. Like, fine, it's funny. It's schlocky. It's like... Not supposed to be the most serious thing ever. It's freaking Star Wars, but yet... I just feel like these characters are hopelessly dumb, and I don't care about them. <laughs> That's... I really think I feel that way. And, uh... So I was, I was surprised to find that Stranger Things, of all shows, ended up having... I mean, some dumb moments here and there, but at least the character motivations kind of made sense. And things felt... fun, and kind of... in a way that also didn't detract from... Um... It didn't, like, do plot contrivances and make the characters feel different just to have a cool action set piece. I mean, there were plenty of those, but you know what I mean. So yeah, sorry, Obi-Wan show. And again, I don't—I didn't hate the Obi-Wan show. I thought—I think it was like Garbo for the most part. But you can still enjoy aspects of the show. I'm not going to take that away from people who uh, enjoyed it. And I've had conversations with people that actually really liked it. I think it's hot garbage, but sometimes you like a little hot garbage. That show was, like, shameless hot garbage. Professor Statue. What a wonderful shade of green your cap is, just like my creators. They were the most clever of all the mushrooms that used to live in this world. Everyone knew how to infuse stones with the magic of speech, but my creators used their knowledge of metal and magic to create mechanical creations, mimicking actual living things. Not all mushrooms agreed with their ways, but all of them accepted their gifts. Some of these mechanical beings still live on today, but their minds have been corrupted by time. Explorers of the unknown is what they were. They wanted to understand the truth of our reality. Their kingdom reflects that. Well, thank you for the lore, Professor. This game does lore right. It's optional. It's not overly wordy. It's just there if you want it. You get a little bit at a time. That's the thing, I want to be... I've said this before for video games. I want to really enjoy what I'm playing and look at the world around me and say, Hey, that's cool. What is that? Why is that like that? As opposed to being told in the beginning for 45 minutes what that thing is that I don't even care about yet. I know I am not every gamer. But that's just my thoughts on it, you know? There we go. I do like the map system. I like how it updates. Hmm. No. Fuck. Oh! That was a total accident. I would have never found this. Mind recovery. You will additionally recover 15 MP when you take damage from an enemy or projectile. Does not work on spikes. I'm assuming that's a relic. Equipable at shrine. Oh, I guess I can equip that now. I don't know why that's doing that, though. That's, that's kind of weird. How do I just place this down? Oh, you just press the button once. Ugh, dumbass. A 
that's how you do that. No, it's not. Fuck! That's how you do that. Hmm. Yeah, this is a whole new region, so I don't know where I'm going here, but... There's gotta be some stuff down there. I think this game is... I like this better than Soldiers. I'm not going to say it's better than Soldiers, because there's a lot that game does cool. As people have said, as I've said, I think the game needs a couple um, patches to get it into a slight better form. Like, a little bit better difficulty balancing from, you know, from the beginning. And also, the, like I said, you play that game for two hours, you're stuck in the same cave. Maybe I just sucked, which I did, but... Um, cool game, though. Three different characters to choose from early on. I liked it. I think it was, it was actually very well designed in many ways. Grabbing platforms was not all that fun, but... Um, it looked amazing. Sounded great. Has a lot of potential. But I like Lone Fungus better. Using the shield cap will create a big vortex, sucking in all projectiles and destroying them in the process. Now that is a spell? It's an emblem. Equipable at shrine. Oh, that's... Okay. So that's a whole new category. So I'm always going to be biased towards Mushroom games. However, the Mushroom game has to be good. God damn it. Oh, I see. Oh, that's that's brutal. <laughs> oh no, I was right at the end. Oh, this one's tough. Sorry, I need to concentrate.
imagine how, like, crazy these are gonna get later on. This is a, this is a nightmare. Got it. No, oh, no, I used it too soon. Fine, I'm fine. Don't worry about me. One, you have to... Uh, <sighs> Look at this guy again. I knew it, and I didn't do it. Knew it, didn't do it. That's my motto. That's that's the story of my life, everybody. Knew it, didn't do it. Mike! That wasn't me saying Mike, even though, I mean, I, I have a several amount of Mike, but I, what I'm trying to say is, my god. That was a my god that I cut short. Time I, I, I don't even know what that is. I don't even know what I just got. I mean, I'm assuming I'll know later, but for the time being, no idea. Oh, I'll equip that thing. Shield cap. Big vortex, destroying them in the process. So I mean, it's an it's an optional thing, but it might be cool. I don't know. So this loops back in here. I know not everybody watches all of my videos. That's another reason why I like to talk about some stuff that I'm reviewing, quote-unquote, pretending to review. Um, and also, I would hope not everyone watches everything I do, because I, I, there's a lot of it.
out of magic. It seemed like a good idea at the time. I'll try it a couple more times. Actually, let me see if I can just farm a little bit of magic. Try a couple more times. Holy mushroom! And there it is. Potential for sequence breaking is here. Confirmed. Even if this isn't a heavy sequence break or any sequence break at all. Just nice to have the option. Oh, that just loops, loops back over here. Okay. Yeah, that won't send projectiles back, but it has a good range at absorbing projectile projectiles. Protectiles. Protectiles. love that. Also, it does the funny number damage. How does that happen? Fuck. What's that? That's something. Also, this music is great. So, I mean, the first area's music is more atmospheric, more ambient. I'm fine with that. And, uh, I don't think it was worth really complaining about, truthfully. I just wasn't sure if this game was gonna have killer tunes. I think it kinda has some good tunes. It places your heal with an orb that you can cast for the cost of 20 MP. Strike it when it's green to heal for 1 HP. If you strike it while it's blue, nothing will happen. That's a little weird. For one HP? That's it? Big evil flower. Definitely what that is. Even if the bosses aren't all crazy, you also regain one extra MP every time you strike something with your sword. Now, does that immediately get added? That's just an ability. Okay, so that's the difference between the abilities and the relics and stuff. Okay. Cool. Power up.
Uh... Probably not back here. Try that ability though. Is that an ability that I can change now? Conjure mushroom. What was that? Oh, it's a, yeah, it's one of those, okay. Oh, one HP as in, I'm an idiot. One HP as in, I'm an idiot, essentially. Like, of course it's one HP. One HP is a lot. My weapon's strength is definitely getting a little, little outdated, however. You can tell that the developer of this game has a pretty, pretty good understanding of what makes a Metroidvania work. Like, this is someone who is a fan of the genre, and probably wanted to make it for that exact reason. I guess one would hope people make games because they're fans of a genre and of video games and want to make the best possible game, and not because they want to make a, a mobile gotcha um, loot fest. Right, Blizzard? I mean, that that's what all video games are made for, because because people want to play cool video games and, and make their own. I mean, that's just obvious. Quad damage. Huh. Picked up the quad. I wish Dread had a randomizer mode built in. I was watching a video about Resident Evil 2 and the N64, and it had a rando, a rando mode built into it, and that was released in the 90s. It was a little imbalanced, though, because sometimes you'd pick up, like, 80 bullets in one, one go. Like, the numbers of things you'd pick up was also randomized. Which, on paper, seems cool until you pick up 20 grenade rounds in the first five minutes. And then the run is totally just broken because you, you have too many grenades. But, I mean, what game was it? Bloodstained. 
Bloodstained eventually got a rando mode, and it was pretty good, too. But the reason I mention it for Dread is... Dread is one of those games that has... Like, some of my favorite gameplay... Uh, ...of the genre. And I just thought it would be it would be really cool if it had a way to uh, just replay the game endlessly without having to find some kind of way to mod a Switch game, which exists at this point, as I've discovered. But I do not have the ability or the desire to do that. I mean, the ability, perhaps. Perhaps. Um, but I'd have to first find a way to make that happen, and I have not done so. Huh. Yeah, that, that might need a stronger attack of some kind. One thing I noticed, I don't know if it's uh, an intentional design choice, probably is, but I just mention it anyway, when you look at the map, it doesn't automatically focus on your mushroom, so sometimes I have to search for my mushroom. Did you ever lose your mushroom? Yeah, sometimes you lose your mushroom. this one. Know how I lived? I'll take it. Whoa, 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 no, 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 bad. Don't, don't, not down there, no. I was also hoping Dread would get some DLC. Perhaps. And not just a boss rush mode, which they did at, they did a speedrun of that at the GDQ, I've heard. I haven't really watched it. I have not kept up with it at all. I only know about that Zelda thing, which, to clarify, the, Z the Zelda thing was, um... Uh, 
Uh, does that mean I can hold more relics? Powers? Oh yeah, it does. Wait. Oh, you can press LB to swap. I'm pressing it. Huh. Doesn't work. Oh, LB is in like... Press the stick in. Oh, that's what that is. I didn't even notice that the, the spore head was changing. The, the, the mushroom cap. That's cool. Counter heal. I'm going to get rid of the counter heal and try... Um, blue health orb for a minute. Replace your heal with an orb you can cast out for 20 MP. Strike it when it's green to heal 1 HP. Guess I can't use it now because uh, I have full minor statue. You don't seem to have the right power or knowledge to pass here, I think. No, I don't think so either. Map Shroom. 88% of this place discovered. Oh, I see. Okay. It's faster, but high risk, high reward, I guess, because you may not actually get the heal. I think it's maybe worth the risk. I'm not sure yet, but... It also means that you have to equip a relic when there are other relics that maybe are better. But it seems it seems powerful. Deep grotto. Oh, this goes down here too. Ah. Hang on one second, everybody. And back. All right. Oh, God. Uh, uh. Oh, no. Oh, 
Oh no. Gotta do a very quick dash after that. Ugh, that's a jump. Some of these are a little crazy. I mean, I'm not saying don't include them, but holy shit. The timing is ex extremely tight. But again, I'm not to be the judge of video game difficulty when I am not always particularly good at video games. Ooh, that's crazy. That's that one's crazy though. It's fine. I'm on all right here. I'm fine here. Forgetting if that one is dash or not. I think it just lost momentum is the problem. That sucks. I think you have to dash into that one. Okay, so that's a dash, definitely. It looks like it could be a couple, it could be jump or dash, but no, it's definitely a dash. <laughs> Closest yet, however. To that. <laughs> oh god. Freaked out. Again, the timing is tight. I know this is an optional area, but the timing is extremely tight. That's, that's really all I'm trying to say. I'm not saying change it. <laughs> I know I have a habit of playing backseat dev, and I'm sorry about that. I'm trying to work on that a little bit, because I get a little too uh, opinionated about difficulty sometimes. But I also think it is, its it, especially if you're a developer working on a game by yourself, it can be difficult to nail the balance, because you end up making sometimes what is good difficulty for you, but not necessarily you know, the other purple. But it doesn't mean that I'm right either. So I don't, I'm not gonna, I think this is, uh, I mean, again, Metroid Dread had some pretty nasty spine shark challenges. Shine spark, rather. I got this. Double jumped because I broke out, man. This is gonna be it. This is the one right here.
Yep. That was a dash. Why? Oh, why? Why? I can't really do commentary during this because... That would be... Insta-death. Timing is so quick. <laughs> so you don't actually have to attack those, but the problem is I'm so used to attacking these things <laughs> that it throws my brain off because it's like attack, don't attack, attack, don't attack. And that's the trick, is acknowledging that and not attacking. That's honestly the trick right there, is just to, you have to just force yourself to not attack. I think I actually have to uh, get to a checkpoint now. Oh, right, that way you can't go. So we'll go back to the deep grotto. Um, difficulty aside for that section, which it was a lot better when I was like, okay, don't attack. You have to just integrate. Do not attack into your brain. Once you do that, it's not as bad. It's just really, really rough for the, uh, you know, for the first couple times. And now I think I'll be able to do sections like that a little bit more effectively. Relic that gives you a little HP. Barrier is different from the other ones, seems to have a lock. Um, that gives you one HP back when you're on one HP was actually useful for letting me know, like that purple discharge, I know that sounds gross, was useful because it allowed me to know exactly when I had one HP. So getting rid of that is has been an adjustment, let's just say.
There's a lot more of this cave area than I expected. I love those mushroom houses in the background. I was gonna use that last checkpoint to stop, but that's your blue eyes. Look into my blue eyes, remember me, and you will give me purpose. I know you want to explore this place further. However, I don't think you are agile enough to pass through here yet. Yeah, those mushroom statues and mushroom cities are cool. Hard game to stop playing. Is this? Huh. Okay, that that's weird. Ow. This reminds me of this area, maybe it's those blocks on the left there, but they remind me a little bit of uh, Metroid 2. It's actually, that's a very good thing. There was some stuff in Metroid 2, specifically the Game Boy Edition, that was really weird. And felt very, like, just, I don't know, foreign? Very, um, ancient? I don't know how to explain it, but like going into those areas without much explanation and just having to invent my own stories as a kid was... It's one of those things that just left an impression. I think that's really what I'm trying to say. Yeah, the movement in this game gets pretty fun. Power reflect parried projectiles will, will do more damage to enemies. Oh, this is here. Oh. One more thing. Oh god. So what the hell are you supposed to do there? Oh no!
gotta be kidding me. Okay, you just have to, like, press in the opposite direction. <laughs> Alright, um, well, I'm nearing my... I'm nearing the end of this. Uh, where's the save point? Guess we can just go this way. And, uh, I want to say that this game is great. And I can see this becoming a thing. I can. More people haven't discovered this yet, but I think this could become a thing. It's very good. Has definitely echoes of Hollow Knight. I like the pacing. I like the way the game plays. Um, it's just a cool game. It's really well done as a Metroidvania so far, and I've enjoyed the three areas I've seen. I want to see more. I like the mushroom shit. I like the mushroom lore. Hey, that rhymed a little bit. And uh, I think it's just a good Metroidvania game. So check out Lone Fungus. I would recommend it almost wholeheartedly, really. I mean, to any Metroidvania fan. Like I said, one developer, so you're not going to see the intricate animations from, like, um, Hollow Knight necessarily, but you will see a well-designed, pleasant-sounding, looking, playing Metroidvania game with lots of secrets. Lots of unique abilities, too, which can be hard for a game like this. It's not just, like, new swords or new missile or missile. It's it's good. So, yeah. Portable map opacity. Oh, there is a portable map. How do you do that? How do you, how do, you do that? Oh. Oh, look at that. There it is. Okay. That's helpful. And you can move it. And, like, you can walk around with it up here. That's cool. And you can set the opacity. We'll do 40%. Lots of options. Lone Fungus. Check it out.